Have you ever heard of a whinging pom? He's becoming quite a figure in modern Australian folklore. You can read about him in practically every newspaper, practically every day. Pom, as you probably know, is the Australian word for the Englishman. And whinging is a derisive term for complaining. Put them together and the whinging pom is the kind of new Australian that the old Australian loathes and despises beyond all others. And at this particular town, at this particular time, the whinging pom is very much in the news. The pay is poor. Uh, there's no overtime as we expected there would be. Uh, housing situation, that's very bad. Uh, living accommodation in the hostels is disgusting. The average wage is about £16 a week. That's what it'd work out. Is that enough to manage on here? Definitely not, no. What are you doing? Are you living out of funds or what? Um, well, I've moved in with a friend into a bungalow and we're sort of buying in bulk and sharing between us and it's working out. How do you find Australians? Oh, uh, well, all in all, they're a good crowd. If you mix in with them, become one of them, don't be standoffish, they are a good crowd. You do get called names, call them names back and they enjoy it. Now, Mrs Dunham, do you feel that the picture you were given of Australia before you came out here was fair or do you think you were taken in in any way? Well, yes, I think we were taken in. In what way? Well, we were promised um, employment for one thing, for the women, and there wasn't any and there still isn't any. This is the first sight of their new life and it doesn't look much like anyone's idea of a brave new world. This is the Barclay Hostel, now exclusively for British migrants, with accommodation for around 600. Lavatories and washing facilities are in separate huts set between the rows, and they're shared with perhaps 10 other families. Feeding is communal in large dining halls. One good thing about hostel life is that it's cheap, and it's tied to the breadwinner's wage packet. One of the conditions of residence is that each family must have at least three pounds to spare each week after the hostel bill is paid. Other hostels are more prepossessing. This one is at Unandera near the works, and here the huts are chalet type. There are concrete paths between them and concrete walkways along the sides. But Unandera houses only 250. Eating, toilet facilities and recreation rooms are still communal. Mr. Stevenson, you're, you've come from Yorkshire, haven't you? Yes. How long have you been out here now? A year and three months. And you've been all that time in the hostel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see any chance of getting out of it? Well, slight chance at the moment. I don't know how it's going to go. What's it going to cost you, do you think, when you leave the hostel and set up home on your own? More than it would cost in England, I think. Mm, roughly how much? Well, we'd probably be paying about seven pound a week. Seven pounds a week. And That's... what deposit do you have to put down? It's about six pounds English money. And what, yes. what deposit do you oh, have to put down? Oh, 800. 800 pounds? Yes, on this house. And it, it is a four-year-old house. Have you saved that 800 since you've been here? We saved about five. We saved well when we first came because my husband got the work. Is he still getting that work? Not as much, no. Not anywhere near as much. How much are you able to save now? We well, haven't said anything for quite a while now. This is the home of Mr and Mrs Kilpatrick from Darlington, a two-bedroom flat with a cooking corner in the living room. He is an inspector in the steelworks. He earns the equivalent of £28 sterling a week, which is £11 more than he was earning in Britain. Now, how do you find things in Australia? Do you prefer the Australian way of life or not? No, I don't. Because um, it's more outdoor life here, and, you know, I like like the dances and watching the TV programmes and that. And they're not very good out here that sort of, with that sort of thing. What sort of programmes do you miss? Hmm. Things like Top of the Pops and, you know, teenage programmes. What about you now, Kevin? Do you like it here better or? Uh, I think I like it here better. Do you? Hmm. What do you like about it here? Oh, well, the sands and I like going surfing on my surfer plane. Well, this is the Nolan's place. He came from Motherwell with his wife and four children. He also has two bedrooms, no proper kitchen, only a cooking corner in the living room, and he's prepared to stick it out for three more years, when with luck he may get a commission house. And it will cost him around three pounds, ten shillings a week to buy on a long-term mortgage. And Mr Nolan isn't whinging either. 
Now, you've probably seen the article in the paper which says that British migrants out here feel cheated, that they're led to believe they're going to get a lot of things they don't actually get when they get here. You have, you've been here about uh, seven months now. Do you feel that they're cheated? I don't feel that I'm being, I'm being cheated anyway. I mean, since I came here, I've been, done well with this company. I'm making good wages, an average, I say, in British money, an average of 24 pounds a week. Now, what were you making back home? Well, dead on, I would say 13 quid a week, and I was slaving for that. Do you think there's any truth in this article, Mrs Nolan, no. from the housewife's point of view? No, it's definitely untrue. We find we've settled down very well since we came here, and I think that's because they've lived in a welfare state so long they expect to get the same benefits here, but they're not prepared to work here. There are some who just don't think there's anything in Australia worth waiting so long for. And Mrs Parsons, was the Australia you found here the Australia you expected before you came out here? No, it wasn't. In what ways did it differ? Well, I found the weather very much like back home. Um, it's very changeable. We've had hail and rain, you know, as well as sun. Not so much sun as I expected. Now, you've got a very nice day today and a beach just at the bottom of the garden almost. Uh, doesn't this make up for some of the things you're missing? No, well, I'm not the sporting type. I do, I do like swimming, but not enough, you know, for the beach to fascinate me and that, such a lot. Well, will you stick it out? No, I hope to go back soon, as soon as we get enough money. But aren't you afraid that when you get home, you'll find that you want to come back? Because no, will don't. your husband go with you or not? No, my husband's going to stay and work. He doesn't mind it too much, not the same as I do. Isn't this rather drastic? Don't you think there's only homesickness and after a little while would wear off? No, I don't think they have anything to offer me at all. 